Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I have a whole bunch of stuff I got to talk about today. I got new programs. I got I got all sorts of cool things that you guys have. I got Flagship Friday, and I got a pre-critic for you guys for your Friday. Um, let's kick things into gear, and let's show a little bit of weather, what's happening here in the city of Missoula. So it's currently 27 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 35. Your low is going to be 28, and then later this week, it's only going to pretty much stay that way with uh, chances of rain and snow mixtures happening pretty much all weekend long. It looks like Saturday night, the low is going to be 31, so it's going to be a little more rainy than snowy this weekend as we go into the weekend in mid-January. So it is a weekend. Uh, it is uh, January 18th today, so I hope you guys had a good couple of days. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what you guys could expect and do during this weekend later in the show for your Mizzou events. But right now, let's talk about some news items that are happening. Um, one of the things that happened last night was that there was a forum at Sentinel High School for a bunch of parents and concerned citizens about the recent uh, make clip that was found at uh, MCPS property at Sentinel High School. Monday, a group of kids found a magazine clip around 8 a.m., which resulted in the school being locked down. Uh, many of the kids were interviewed, and a lot of lockers were searched, a lot of things happening. Of course, upon further investigation, the clip belonged to a handgun that has yet to be seen. Of course, at the forum on Thursday evening, drew about 60 guests. Principal Ted Fuller, joined by Sentinel administrators, school district leadership, and police department, um, voiced satisfaction with how things got done overall. Construction caused many weak points in security, um, in which security cameras that would have re uh, revealed the identity of the person were down at that time. Um, there were many rolling blackouts during construction, and um, pr the principal and staff had to spread the word about the lockdown um, via a messenger app. Um, there, of course, the Q&A forum lasted last night. Uh, they had their presentation, and then the Q&A lasted for about two hours. A lot of people say a lot of good things about the MCPS. A lot of people asking if they should be metal detectors. And uh, Principal Ted Fuller said that that would just add extra stress to a, a already stressful situation, and they want to make sure that um, people, the kids are safe, but most importantly, comfortable. Um, police, staff, and administration were, uh, if you were want to talk to them or have any concerns, you can call the MCPS number at 728-2400, or you can find out more information at mcpsmt.org. In state news, Billings is looking to try again when it comes to their non-discrimination ordinance uh, in Missoula. Uh, much like Missoula, uh, Billings is looking to protect peoples of Missoula so they can get jobs and places to live without um, persecution for what they believe in and uh, what their life choices are. Billions High School students uh, started to appeal to the upcoming city council election, which will be seeing five new seats in their city council. Um, students plan to use this time to try to cultivate change in their community. In 2014, Billings City Council uh, talked about this. Wow, it's already been like five years. Wow. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's just crazy to think about because um, this is something that happened uh, many, many years ago here in the city of Missoula. Uh, but of course, when it finally came up to a vote, um, in the August meeting of 2014, this, uh, the council struck it down at by 3 a.m. in a 6 to 5 vote following hours of testimony. Of course, according to Senator, uh, to senior uh, at West, um, at Billings West High School uh, Gay Straight Alliance, Ellie Lowell, even though people don't hear about it, it do that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. She said protecting the most vulnerable in the community needs to be a priority for the city, even for those who don't agree with the lifestyle. In national news, USDA is looking to continue their funding of food stamp programs and, you know, like the Missoula Food Bank, USDA does a lot of grants writing applications, so they're looking to extend this and they say that they can extend for another pay period. Um, so early February, just around that area is when they're still uh, basically not going to be able to pay their employees to continue a lot of these programs. Many government entities are shut down, on the other hand, and many are looking deep in their pockets for whatever they can. The IRS, on the other hand, it's called a furloughed employee. So they're calling employees back about 46,000 employees back to work without pay to help process tax refund for tax filing season, which begins January 28th for individuals. And just so you guys know, you can't skip out on taxes. Um, the um, It's called the anti 
Deviancy Act, which allows the government to continue operations without funding in order to protect human life and government property. This is a provision that helps FBI and Secret Service agents working during a shutdown. Many programs that need grants from the USDA, for example, are not going to get anything for the time being. And many Wall Street uh, folks are worried that this could cause that this could tank the economy. Many. Uh, um, uh, private uh, contracting groups use a lot of uh, government contracts to help pay a lot of their employees and a lot of stuff like that. So a lot of people are feeling the uh, the, the push and the squeeze of um, and, other a and other acronyms I can come up with. Of course, some of the federal labor unions have filed lawsuits challenging the government's authority to force people to work without pay. So. But now, but for now, the one thing that you can take away from this government shutdown is that you still have to pay taxes. All right, let's talk about a little bit of international news. Uh, Britain, in an overwhelming vote against the Brexit, will result in Britain's future and the EU unclear. So here are the three scenarios, pretty uh, straightforward. The, the, of course, they postpone the deadline with the EU beyond March so they can get back to the drawing board, but the EU has shown no interest in extending it. Um, do nothing, and Britain will separate regardless from the EU, which is even worse for the um, unprepared Britain and the overall economy of the EU and the UK. Britain, of course, decides to stay with the EU, which many people are thinking that may not happen, but which would make a lot of their efforts for this deal a waste of time and money with the whole Brexit. So there's a one-third chance that uh, British Parliament will uh, not secede from the EU. Members of Parliament belonging to the Prime Minister Theresa May's Conservative Party feared that if they voted down her government, it would trigger a general election and open the door for um, opposition Labour Party taking control of the government. Uh, consider this Brexit whiplash. Of course, Tuesday, more than 100 Conservative parliaments voted against May's plan. A day later, they rallied to support her and voted to save her government. This has uh, been a troubling time for the Conservative Party in Britain. Theresa uh, May's campaign to remove the UK from the EU could happen if British Parliament doesn't decide anything because doing nothing will still have the UK leave the EU. So that's kind of what's happening in the world today. Um, here are a couple things that are happening just on MCAT. So if you uh, manage to uh, check out our MCAT channel 189 through Charter Cable here in Missoula, you can see some of these programs. But if you miss any of them, you can always go to MCAT.org for more information. All right, here's this. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about a bunch of movies that are coming out this week. I showed up on a sunny day and walked in the door, and it was dark. I think there may have been a light on, but it was like a dirt floor, like tar paper walls. But it was legit. And there were like heavy bags hanging from the ceiling and, and uh, speed bags, and there was an, actually a ring. And Bill, the trainer, he, he was very serious about this. Like, you know, I was, was I going to commit to the club? Yes, I was definitely going to commit to the club. Well, you have to sign up for this program. I'm like, this sounds like Amway. What it, it was USA Boxing. <laughs> He's like, there's a fee. I'm like, oh, the training fee. OK, what's it going to be? $25. OK, yes, I paid $25. And then I was a member of the club. And it was like this moment of like glorious like reckoning. I was finally there. I was in a boxing club. And so the other members of the boxing club started to trickle in. There was five guys that showed up that day between the ages of 8 and 12. And, <laughs> Um, How many of you know about Crow tribal politics and have read it in the paper? When new chairman comes in, there's a big turnover. About 300 employees get let go. It doesn't matter if you're Crow or not. Well, I, I didn't get let go, but the because I'm related to everybody, so I didn't get let go. But the attitude that a lot of my um, uh, tribal members had coming in was what didn't feel good. I, and I didn't feel like I had as much support. And this op opened up, and I thought, OK, I'll change, switch gears, and I'll come here. And uh, I came here, so I, I, I went down from 98 staff, $8 million budget, down to uh, not even a million. <laughs> and about 800,000 and about 15 staff. I'm like, wait, where's the rest of the money here? And they said that. And I'll have to say, speaking of dinners, these ladies would put up and preserve these vegetables that they grew to get them through the winter months. I believe some of the finest dinners that I've had out here was made with these home processed, home grown vegetables. The main course for the meal, if it was meat, 
was usually elk or venison, most generally coming out of Johnson Creek and Sheep Mountain. So these are memories I have of this. I, I, I have been fortunate enough to travel Germany, France. I've eaten all over the world, as you can tell. And there's no finer cuisine than that that was grown here in Bonner, along with meat that come off Sheep Mountain. That was about the best. <laughs> One of the forms of hunting, which most of you know about the buffalo jumps, we've got two parks in our state park system. Um, First Peoples Buffalo Jump up by Great Falls, and then Madison Buffalo Jump, which this drive line here shows a picture of um, over by Bozeman. And people just, the, this was such an amazing feat when they went out onto the plains of landscape engineering. So using the landscape, and people must have known it so well to know how to move bison in these certain directions without making them panic. So this is a drive line, and there are thousands of drive lines across Montana. And of course, the drive lines, they'd slowly move the buffalo, and then of course, over the cliff where there were people waiting. If they were injured, they um, dispatched them. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little bit of that pre-critic. It's time for pre-critic. Um, Pre-critic. Anyways, uh, so if you haven't, if you don't know what pre-critic it is, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but the title and perhaps the synopsis. And we start off with a little thing called Glass. It's a movie that brings a group of familiar faces to this M. Night Shyamalan film that will wrap up a trilogy we kind of gave up on and we didn't even know it was a trilogy until... Uh, well, Split came out, which is the second movie of these trilogy, but people were like, oh, it's just some guy. But, of course, Bruce Willis is here, and he's uh, in for a treat when he goes out and beats up people with mental issues. And it's true. He does beat a guy with the mental issues. Uh, Bruce Willis guy is, uh, you know, like, you know, leave the – he. okay, so anyways, uh, in the movie, it kind of be like, hey, leave those cheerleaders alone. And Jay McAvoy character is like, no. Sam Jackson character is like, all according to plan, and this looks like the bad guys teaming up, and anyways, expect this to go on for a little while. Like, you know, like those ex those lines, but extended for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And up next, we got uh, an Amine movie. So if you like Amine from Japanime, uh, you can get ready, f uh, get your gi ready, and get ready for the kicking and fighting adventure that is Dragon Ball. If you don't know that kind of stuff... Um, you obviously didn't grow up with teenage boys. Um, they're all about fighty, fighty, punch, punch for quite some time. And of course, one boy grows up to be a simple piece. One becomes a reluctant hero. Another person is basically just like a rage machi machine or whatever. So a person comes down, becomes a symbol of peace and savior of Earth more than a few times. So he's basically like Superman. But with better villains and heroes, uh, this movie is about a group of aliens invading Earth with close ties with the super strong heroes. So basically, Man of Steel. All right, up next we got um, An Acceptable Loss. Um, this movie, I assume, is about a group of people who must choose between saving their people or people they send to save other people. Based <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I keep on choking on this crappy movie, but basically what starts off as a normal day turns into a total snafu. Jamie Lee Curtis is in this movie, so that's that's nice. The synopsis implies blackmail to the main character, which may explain why there aren't any uh, willing to, um, they aren't willing to sacrifice their political career until it affects them personally. And um, anyways, any political theory has too much to say about the current political system. So you may want to pass this unless you want to just hear talk politics and kind of stuff. I think that's what this movie is mostly about. So you can expect that and more. But here's a movie, and um, I'll, I'll kind of spoil it for you. It's a movie by the flagship kids, and it's it's basically The Hunger Games. There you go. It's the, the kids that said, oh, let's make The Hunger Games. It's like, what do you want to call it? The Thirsty Games. I'm just like, all right, here it is.
congratulations. You have been selected to quench our thirst for violence in this year's Thirsty Games. It's not original, and neither are the conditions. Last one of you standing lives, and by standing, I mean you will have to kill one another before the day becomes night. Six hours, roughly. To make sure you participate, we've implanted little bombs inside you and will detonate on the hour, every hour, until all of you are dead. But if you wish to live, kill each other. Sounds simple enough? Now, go. This is a joke. They're lying. We can't have bombs inside of us. That's just uh, crazy. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. No. No. It's wrong. No. We don't have families or homes. I'm not killing anyone. It's wrong, and I don't know. They just want to thin us out. They just want to. The government's against us. They're. We're. To them, they think that we're just useless. They. They just want to thin us out so there's more water. Quiet. Quiet. Does anybody even remember how we even got here? I don't. But nothing's gonna happen. You're thinking the worst. And they want us to do something. Let's not. Let's just. Chill, we got a whole school to ourselves. Why not make the best of it? Oh, oh, oh. We, we don't really know each other. Yeah, why don't we introduce each other? Yeah, For one, I'm a Mecca and I'm a high strong kid who, who is... Wait, you're high? What is wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Cameron and <laughs> you may know I'm a nerd, as you can see, and uh, I'm not gonna kill anyone. I'm Clara. I'm Pan. What up? I'm Laura. I'm Jack. Detroit. But don't worry, this is from Alex's drink. Where is that? Does it have something on your neck? It, it's getting faster. It's a bomb! You guys, you can't no. leave her! I don't know how powerful the explosion is gonna be. Save yourself. Okay, go. It stops. Maybe it was just a death. No, 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 no. I know I didn't have a family or a home, but still, no, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm sorry, I don't want to do. Why? 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 Well, maybe we should form an alliance, you know, because there's three of the boys and only two of us. I mean, I guess so. Move! Oh. Ah. Uh-oh. 
Sweet. Let's talk about some city council stuff. So the city of Missoula is looking for uh, getting being a part of a class action lawsuit against uh, people, uh, um, folks or companies that are uh, basically selling medication uh, to hospitals that have opioids in them. So that's a huge epidemic that's happening is uh, prescription medication abuse and uh, addiction as well. So one of the things that the city is looking to do is jumping on a um, uh, like a kind of like a, a nationwide campaign to help uh, prevent this. So of course, across the uh, the country, states, counties, cities, and towns are joining class action suits aimed at rece uh, recovering at least some of the costs incurred in providing for public safety and welfare as product of opioid addiction. So just all the results, all the things that happen afterwards, the addiction, the problems, um, basically looking for uh, satisfaction. Uh, the city of Missoula is looking to take a step to make change on the local level. And here is Mayor John Ingen with uh, their reasoning. Action does what this retention agreement allows us to do is pursue some of those um, damages and receive direct uh, benefit from the suit rather than having, um, rather than joining the Montana Attorney General, for example, and being in a position of um, sharing that pot of money in a way that's largely out of our control. Um, Scott has plenty of detail for you, but I hope you'll look on this retention agreement, which is uh, low risk for us um, and, and has potential reward. Uh, favorably. And with that, and the chair's permission, I will ask. All right. So that was Mayor John Ingen. Basically, th what this means is that it's going to be um, one of those, like, um, um, if you ever watch daytime TV and you see those crazy commercials, like, do you ever suffer from mesothelioma? That kind of thing. So that's kind of what the city's doing. It's just basically signing a survey, but we're putting the name on a survey. And uh, I don't know. Th this is not a really good way to describe it, but it's a way for the city of Missoula to be join in with other communities that have done this to uh, to basically sue these um, organizations. So Scott Stearns, Boom Carlton Law Firm. Uh, the the, the uh, Boom Carlton is the law firm that represented the city of Missoula during the water condemnation hearing. And this is what Scott Stearns, a uh, lawyer, had to say um, in terms of this. Opioids have been around for a very long time, but the opioid epidemic is relatively new. I think OxyContin was only hit the market in about 1996 but the effects since then has been devastating. The overprescription of those drugs, the treatment of pain, the way we treat pain is very different. Uh, the way doctors were incentivized to prescribe things that before didn't get prescribed for certain post-surgery type things has changed dramatically and the effect has been uh, a huge leap in the mortality tables. A lot of the allegations that you see in the complaint that I believe was attached, uh, the draft complaint was attached um, online, uh, are based on the mortality tables uh, and statistics kept by the CDC. And you can see a huge trend line up, people dying from opioids since the late 90s. And this lawsuit seeks recovery of damages all right, so that was Scott Stearns. And, um, of course, you know, since it's a law firm, they're looking for a lot of people who have insights and who have experienced any kind of opioid uh, crisis within their family or within uh, their relationship. So this is a, um, an interesting thing that they're going to be talking about. Of course, the rest of the meeting uh, um, dived into prescription drug, drug deaths and illegal drug use with opioid medication. There's just a lot of information that they kind of went out there with their presentation. But, of course, it's a $7 billion industry, which also contributes to damages as a result and punitive damages statistics are that the CDC database and Mr. Stearns went into it with more detail, you know, like lawyers do. Um, Gwen Jones asks how Missoula would be involved. And um, this is uh, Scott Stearns response about how much effort Missoula will have to do. Of cities and counties and townships and the like have filed these lawsuits. The federal system has this MDL process that allows one judge to preside over preliminary matters, procedural matters, and actually have some of the cases go to trial first, and they become kind of test cases for all the other cases. So Judge Polster in uh, Cleveland will likely be presiding over this case, at least for procedural matters, preliminary matters at first. Uh, what I'll also tell you is we're a little later to the game than many of the back east 
communities and, and, and counties. I think the first trials in this matter right now before Judge Polster and the MDL are set for September of 2019. Now, of course, those deadlines could change and things could get extended out, but uh, we're seeing um, this litigation already happening. We, we, we can tell, you know, based on like-sized communities, what is likely to happen in a community like ourselves. We're, um, we're, we're seeing how experts approach these in other uh, similarly situated towns. Um, so we're, we're, we're able to, based on prior precedent, get a feel for what might happen with the city of Missoula's case or Cascade County's. All right, so basically this is a, you know, the, the way that they kind of describe this in the media is it, it's kind of like a pre-class action lawsuit while they're trying to get this on the gr uh, the grassroots level to make systematic change within the uh, nation. Um, Murder uh, Bracera also makes a suggestion uh, to Scott Stearns to look into in terms of, of opioid addiction. Um, Native American communities are among the most harmed by the opioid epidemic, and usually they're left out of the conversation. I'm just encouraging you to reach out to them and put um, them at the table, or if you're not planning on it, um, I guess that's my question. Are you, are you reaching out to them? Because I think their statistics really speak to the urgency of, of uh, taking this issue forward. Uh, I've personally dealt with two of the seven tribes' uh, attorneys on these issues, including uh, Flathead Salish Kootenai. Uh, they Flathead Salish Kootenai has signed on to the litigation as well uh, with their already existing national council that they work with, but I have told them that I am happy to work with them, especially with Lake County's involvement as well. Uh, obviously, there's, there's synergies to be gleaned from working together on these issues. All right, so that was Scott Stearns, and I'm going to, and that was the last quote from the meeting. Um, and of course, uh, um, there, there's, this is an item that will go to the consent agenda, and this is basically to put Missoula on retention for future actions uh, for this opioid crisis. And um, Missoula voted in favor to move it to the consent, consent agenda, which will be talked about on Monday. So that was a committee of the whole meeting. Up next, we got parks and conservation. And of course, over the past two years, the city of Missoula, Trout Unlimited, and Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks have worked collaboratively, collaboratively to collect data and plan a, pl a project to address dam removal. So the Rattlesnake Dam is up for removal and the restoration but a lot of time, but a lot of times, there's a lot of big plans happening. In fact, um, with the co water condemnation, it all goes back to the water condemnation hearing back here in Missoula back a couple of years ago. And um, one of the properties that were gathered two years ago was the uh, Rattlesnake Dam, which was originally owned by uh, Mountain Water Company, which is now Missoula Water. And what they're trying to do is getting rid of, getting rid of the dam but also trying to figure out how they're going to be able to restore the uh, Rattlesnake Dam area to its uh, original uh, glory. So here is Morgan Valiant. He's with uh, City Park. Um, he talks about what's next with the city of Missoula. Going to get developed. I can say it's, it's really, uh, in, in my experience, this is the first time we've really had a, 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 a large restoration project um, coupled with this recreation planning. And so it's been really fun to kind of look at the site and as we do designs, like Rob mentioned, to make sure that we're really seeking that balance between recreational use and our habitat goals. Um, All right, so uh, the cost, if you're wondering, it's gonna be definitely over a million dollars to uh, remove the dam and restoration of the place. Um, many plans that they're gonna be talking about uh, to turn this site around from basically being a useless dam to a park space, and the dam hasn't really been used for the last 40 years, it's just kind of there. Um, they removed a couple uh, pieces of the dam already to uh, improve water flow. And Rob Roberts with Trout Unlimited talks about the water and groundwater issues uh, in terms of like, you know, when you remove a dam, it, like all that excess water that you've been um, backing up, you know, how is it going to affect the area? And this is uh, Rob Roberts talking about that. So in terms of migration of the stream, you know, our, our stream where we leave it is still going to be about five feet below this wetland surface. And I think, I think the hydrology that creates this wetland, this is a fen, so a fen is a groundwater-fed wetland. I think it's the groundwater that comes off of Mount Jumbo and, and that ridge and essentially seeps through the upper terrace where all the residences are and then pops out 
there's a terrace right here, and it pops out as groundwater on the toe of this feature. So if you can visualize water sort of seeping out of this toe, and then you have a clay layer underneath all this that prevents it from going even further. So it, it kind of sheet flows across it. Yeah, it's a super unique feature, and like I said, uh, you know, we haven't gotten to the point of understanding how geologically and how with this dam construction, you know, that it actually formed and how old it is, but surmising it's probably 10,000 years old or something on that order. All right, so um, talk a little bit about that. Of course, there's, or, you know, like, like he said, the clay already absorbs a big uh, bulk of the water and, of course, this the runoff from the winter. Um, Let's see. So far, the city uh, will be raising money to help facilitate the removal and restoration of the area. They're looking for grants. Um, they want to be able to raise $800,000 is what they're looking at to raise to offset current projections. They're looking at federal grants and looking at other uh, local grants. But of course, so far, they have raised $624,000 have been raised thus far, but are also looking to for the additional $800,000 on top of that. Rob Roberts from Trotter Limited again, talks about funding and implementing the project. One big question is how you sequence things like um, procurement of a construction contractor. Um, given the timelines that it takes to get that process going with the amount of money you might have in hand to be you know certain that you can actually pay that contractor so um i think those are questions we haven't fully um you know figured out yet but are, are currently working on and i think the moa drives you know some of that all right so right now uh, most of this is all planning uh, it's all in the planning phase um the project is ongoing and any demolition and restoration will co occur summer of july 2020 so still has another year of planning and the any kind of initial uh um, removal and restoration will be starting in the summer of 2020. so we're still about a year and a half away from all that stuff so uh, for more information about these meetings more you can go to mcat.org mcat.org is your source for everything missoula if you're looking for uh, more long formatted uh, city government meetings or just looking up some of the programs that i showed you earlier in the show you can go to mcat.org follow any of these links and more but of course all your government stuff is on the ci.missoula.mt.us. May I just kind of tease you that um, the city of Missoula's um, Sire website, which uh, runs the engine for the videos that you saw here, uh, their audio is not as good as the audio that is provided from MCAT. So if you watch it on MCAT, you can get a higher superiority quality compared to what you see on their Sire website. Yep. And that's all based on my opinion alone. It's definitely, it's definitely noticeable if you ever compare the two, and I have. All right, so um, I don't need to, I don't need to justify it. All right, so that's that's what's going on with that. If you want to find out more information about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice, but of course you can always Google Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. Um, I think I have a couple things else I want to say. I do want to mention that we are going to be starting up a spring Flix Camp, and this is happening during spring break between March 25th and March 29th, which is a Monday through Friday, and this is 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., basically kind of taking place of school, but it's a little more fun and creative environment, which we basically teach kids all about the um, broadcast medium. They learn a little bit about YouTube. Uh, they learn how to uh, basically protect themselves um, in terms of the ever-growing social media that is um, today. So, you can find out more, more information by going on timcat.org. You click on the link right here, and it'll take you to the form, and, and it will describe a little bit more information, but it's pretty much a great uh, creative outlet for a lot of creative kids who like stop animation, um, movie making, and just a whole bunch of, uh, you know, uh, theater, uh, film critics and whatnot. So we're always looking for any kids who are creative to come on down and be part of the MCAT community. But if you want to be a part of the MCAT community, and, you know, camps are cool, but also um, you can come down here pretty much any time. Um, MCAT's open Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 7 p.m. And also we have a lot of uh, good orientation programs. Um, every Wednesday, orientation at 530, we rent out equipment and professional type grade equipment for a lot of people looking to get into broadcasting and, and or media. Cool. All right, so that's that's my spiel. Um, I do want to mention that uh, MCAT will be live streaming tomorrow night, and it's going to be a big, pretty big epic games um, between Hellgate and Sentinel. Both boys and girls are doing a doubleheader at Sentinel High School between uh, Hellgate girls 
uh, Hellgate, I uh, mean, Sentinel Girls, and then, of course, Sentinel Boys and Hellgate Boys. Um, it should be pretty interesting because they're both uh, going to be back to back starting at 515. You can watch it on MCAT's Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. If you like us on our page, you'll get notified of any live streams that happen. All right, so I think I did all that stuff. I have an art clip for you guys, and then I'm going to talk about some uh, events later on in the show. But for now, here is the um, here's a taste of the 47th annual art auction benefit for the MAM. <laughs> So that's the last time uh, you I mean I'll show this clip a couple times so it'll be the last time you get to see any of those art installations I suggest you go down on over to the Missouri Museum check out some of these art installations because they'll be auctioned away on the 47th annual art auction which will be happening on uh, February uh, I can't remember what day it is but I'm pretty sure it's like February 2nd and it, it's the first Saturday in February and it's going to be in the UC ballroom it's February 2nd and uh, the doors open at 5 p.m. in the UC ballroom the auction starts at 7 p.m. And you guys can auction on any of these. Uh, they have a professional auctioneer. So you're going to see a guy in a cowboy hat going, I don't know, 500, $5,000, $6,000. Yeah, so you hear that. It's great. It's wonderful. Just seeing that alone is amazing just to watch. Uh, okay. Let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. This is from MissoulaEvents.net. As always, uh, Friday is a great place to go down to the Missoula Public Library to get your kids engaged in reading. It's Tiny Tales and Story Time for kids aged birth to five years of age. And it's just to get kids involved with books and reading, learning how to read and learning how to write. Because it's never too early to uh, teach a kid to learn to read and or write um, and or spell. Because I've, I've, I've met a kid who is probably about 10 or 11 who... Barely knew how to spell. All right, so just letting you guys know. Think about it. It's really important. Um, Hands-on science, blood typing. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a uh, different kinds of blood and how scientists detect blood types at the Discovery Bench today. Um, and they're... <coughs> And they're also doing light play in the makerspace. Ooh, that was, ah, oh, that hurt everything. All right, <laughs> Missoula Public Library is doing yarns and watercolor. If you're interested in doing some stitching, maybe make a hat or uh, scarf, yarns is the place to be at Missoula Public Library. Watercolor is another great place. Uh, they usually has about eight people. You have to RSVP by, going to, uh, by calling 721-BOOK for more information. Cribbage and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center. If you're inter interested in uh, throwing down a little bit of cards in a card game, you guys can go to the Missoula Senior Center pretty much every single day during lunchtime and enjoy Cribbage, Bridge, Scrabble, and all sorts of wonderful gameplay. Endeavor, Friday uh, Board Game Day. Endeavor is doing a free um, Friday from 1.30 to 2.30, and they also have a Lego club from 2.30 to 3.30. <coughs> It's board, card games, but you can also bring your own as well. If you're a child like to play Magic, D&D, &D, or Pokemon, they're welcome to bring their own cards for and form a team. Everyone, everyone is welcome. It's not a drop-off. It is a parent and child event. It's not uh, you can drop off your kids. So it's not like our Saturday drop-ins, which are that wonderful. 
Okay, so downtown master plan work in progress presentation. It's a mouthful, but it happened all week long. I talked about it on my Wednesday show, but this is the culmination of Missoula downtown master plan. So if you have something, if you had something to say about it, you missed your chance because uh, Tuesday through Thursday, pretty much all day, you can um, talk about what you care about and how Missoula grows for the future. And they're going to have a presentation at starting at 4 p.m. at the Wilma. It is a work in progress presentation. Uh, Dover, Cole, and Partner will present a, uh, work completed over the week at the wrap-up presentation from 4 to 6. Everyone is welcome. For, for, for more information, you can call them at 543-4238. Again, that number is 543-4238. You can email them info at Missoula Downtown. Dot com. All right. Predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium. If you're interested in seeing how uh, bugs and uh, other anthropods consume prey, capture and consume prey, you can check out um, the Missoula Insectarium. Go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information. Come see who is hungry today. Um, every evening with Steve, Stephen Gluckert, uh, Part of uh, the show that I produce here at MCAT is called Look Before You Speak with the host, Stephen Gluckert, and he's doing an uh, art installation, an art gallery at the Gallery 709. He's doing a, a talk, and he's going to be there from 5 to 9 p.m., um, and it's uh, it's the gallery talk starts at 7 p.m., and, of course, guitar music after, because Steve Gluckert is uh, more than a... Um, a painting artist, but he's also a musician. You can check it all out. You can come enjoy refreshments and uh, special music by Stephen after the gallery talk at 7 p.m. at the, uh, which is uh, 709 Ronan Street, which is why they call it 709 Gallery. So you can look up more information by going to um, montanaart.com. Um, or again, the number is 541-7100. Again, that number is 541-7100 for the 709 inside the uh, Montana Art and Framing. Okay. This nice little plug for my buddy Steve Glukert. But Family Friendly Friday is at Top Hat. Top Hat is a great place for family, drink specials, all that stuff from 6 to 9. Uh, Calendar Girls, uh, MCT, Missoula Children's or Missoula Community Theater for the uh, play. This is the third play of the season. It's called Calendar Girls, and it's going to be at 7.30 p.m. nightly um, with 2 p.m. Uh, 2, p 2 in the afternoon to matinees on Saturday and Sunday with an earlier evening show on Sunday at 6.30, and this will go on this weekend and then next weekend, and that's it. You won't be able to see Calendar Girl for another 15, 16 years in the city of Missoula. And happening um, almost it seems like it happens every month, but this is a drag show. A uh, drag show is happening uh, tonight at the Badlander. It's part of the UM Women's Resource Center. It's proud to present the Penny Rock Drag Show. It's a fundraiser for the Vagina Monologues uh, in an all-bodied and all-gendered production. All proceeds from the Vagina Monologues will be donated to the Student and Advisory Resource Center, SARC, at the University of Montana. So it's 18+. Uh, plus. $5 cover, and you can dance the night away right after you watch a bunch of dregs do some lip syncing. Lip singing. Cool. All right. So that's pretty much it for your Friday events. I am going to talk about some Saturday events, but I do want to show another art clip for you guys, and this is one that will be ending in mid-February.
Hey guys, welcome back. I got some Saturday, Sunday, and a little bit of Monday events happening. It is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, and we got all those events and more happening this weekend as well. So kicking things off for your Saturday is the uh, Zootown Quadruple X, which is a basketball tournament, which starts at uh, 6 a.m. If you have a kid who is between uh, 6th and 9th grade and who wants to do a little bit more of basketball beyond what the school provides, it's a really fun activity, part of the Zoo town um, basketball groups and this is part of Montana Idaho Wyoming Washington teams of all abilities new and beginner to advanced and you can call uh, 214-7876 again that number is 214-7876 for more information and how to get you your kids involved as well also every Saturday is the winter market to fill in the gap for all your uh, farmers market summer time um, um, harvest festival needs winter market is a great place to look at a lot of the uh, food that you guys that are grown locally here and sold locally here and along with some breads and some wonderful things that are baked here as well. Winter Market at the Missoula Senior Center from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. First aid, CPR, AED certification courses. It's wonderful. It's just uh, at the campus Rec Grizzly Pool. They teach you about CPR and uh, how to save lives. Uh, this course teaches uh, participant skills with the American Heart Association's research proven practice while watching it techniques you can carpool um you can call them to carpool you, uh, but of course this is online registration uh it's 45 dollars per course uh 60 dollars combination first aid and cpr aed so it's 45 dollars for a course but of course if you want the big you want to just know everything about what you need to do to save lives if there's a situation 60 dollars and it all happens at the grizzly pool start at 10 a.m you can call it to register uh 243 Two seven six three. Again, the number is two four three two seven six three. You can follow the link on the MissoulaEvents.net website by going to MissoulaEvents.net. Um, a day of Buddhist practice, a Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Wow, that's a lot of years. Uh, once a month, uh, Lama. Uh, David Curtis, an, um, not with two L's, but with one L, uh, teaches on a subject of Tibetan Buddhist mind training techniques, which offer practical methods for exploring and reframing our thoughts and per, uh, perceptions to bring about more peace and ease in our daily lives. And you can sign up and learn more about this by going to BigSkyMindMontana.org. It's nice meditation Buddhist. Something easy and chill. But if you want something with the whole family, family workshop at the Missouri Museum, join artist and illustrator Courtney Blazon to explore what happens in your space between reality and fantasy. Upon pen and marker, explore the theme of change and express your own growing, uh, pains, uh, growing pains through illustrations in a chaotic world where we always make choices between real life and dreamscapes. Join Courtney Blazon in this creative journey. And this happens from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And it is free, nice, fun workshop with Courtney Blazon an artist who is famous here in Missoula. If you haven't seen uh, the traffic signal box that she painted uh, right next to El Cazador on the corner of, uh, I believe it's um, Front and Higgins. You can check it out. That art box is amazing. She's very gothic uh, cartoonist for sure. So a lot of cool stuff. Um, and she's such a bubbly personality if you ever get a chance to meet her. Uh, M's Cat Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. If you're interested in having your kid do a little bit of uh, M Cat stuff. And, you know, like it's kind of like a, a preview of what kind of our camps are all about. But M Cat Saturday drop-ins are a great way for kids to come down and express their creativity. We have a bunch of regulars, apparently. We have at least three or four regulars that come in every week um, and they can tell you what it's all about as well if you don't if you don't want to take my word for it. Uh, Snow Your Hands Up, Painting with a Twist. They do a bunch of events and off of their Stevens Center location. Uh, Snow Your Hands Up and come in and paint this cute little snowman. This one is uh, going to be a blast. So don't forget to bring some drinks and some friends. Introduction is, uh, instruction is guided and uh, supplies are provided. They'll see you at their studio. Um, Clinton close-up spaghetti dinner and silent auction. Uh, nothing gets me going like a sp spaghetti dinner and a silent auction. Dinner and silent auction fundraiser to benefit Clinton close-up students and help them get to Washington, D.C. And this happens from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday at Clinton Elementary School. It's $5 for adults, $3 for children, and families of four is $15. So you can check all that out and more. Headcase 
showcase. The event is free, and it's going to be happening at Free Cycles. This is a, a concert and art show combined. It's located at Free Cycles, and it happens from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Doors open at 6. Music starts at 7 with music by Brute Fit uh, Finesse, Jupiter Beat, and Headcase Harmony. Um, the event is meant to bring your artists and musicians together to try and build a, a better platform for youth of Missoula to showcase their talents. There's a $2 raffle to win up to $300. The raffle does go towards paying the other bands playing the event. There's free food, um, guitar, uh, good music, and artwork being sold. So come on down and enjoy a night of fun at Free Cycles. All right. So if you're interested in going out and about on Saturday night, May I remind you, Union Club has a band. Uh, Badlander um, is having DJ music. Yonder Mountain String Band is going to be on top at Lounge. Um, and the Montana Folklore Society Contra Dance is going to be at Missoula Senior Center to get some traditional folk music and folk dance for your Saturday night. All right, so let's talk about some Sunday events. Dance Church. Um, the Downtown Dance Collective uh, Church is undeniable, unmistakable, and unequivocally unabashed time. It may be what you want right now. It may be absolutely awful, awfully sometime, awesome. Uh, you may be surprised or you may be right at home. It's a non-denominational groove land of this company. Um, so th the whole idea is that they just want to dance. And it's easygoing guidance to dance however you want, express the joy of dance and everything else you may need. And it's, da it's called Dance Church, and it happens every Sunday at the Downtown Nights Collective at 11 a.m. Um, I want to also tell that there is a Martin Luther King Jr. documentary screening at the University of Montana. I believe it will be in the uh, UC ballroom, but it must be might be in the UC theater because that's usually where they play videos. It's so it's going to be happening at the University of Montana at 1 p.m. And hundreds of people from Missoula area will be gathering on this nationwide day of c commemoration to the legacy of Dar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Slam and poetry for a change. Imagination Brewing Company is doing a poetry slam to, uh, Sunday night at 6 p.m. Check it out. Um, also, Monday, I just want to give a, a little shout out to a bunch of um, organizations in Power Montana is doing an event at 1 p.m. at the Roxy Theater. Um, 5 p.m., Karis Park is uh, gathering up for a march from uh, Karis, uh, pretty much uh, the uh, the carousel area, and they're going to be marching all the way over to uh I believe it's the St. Saint Saint Xavier or St. Anthony Parish. And it's going to be, it's the church across from um, the Missoula Public Library. So they march from there to there. And that's where the event will happen. So the march starts at 530. They do this every year in the city of Missoula. And if you want to join, they always have it every year. All right. So that's what's happening um, for that. So um, thanks for joining me. I just... Uh, that's pretty much it for my show. It was a long show, um, but I'm going to end it right here. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.